So you've diagnosed yourself or been diagnosed with gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and you may have found yourself browsing the interwebs for the latest photographic accessories and come across Rokinon branded lenses. And during that time, you may have asked yourself, why are these things so cheap? Is there something I should know? Is there something wrong with these lenses? So that's what I want to cover with you today in this video called four things you should know about Rokinon lenses. Now, to be clear, I'm going to be talking about their lenses designed for photography rather than their lenses catered to videographers. So let's get started with number one. The first thing you should know about Rokinon lenses is that almost all of them are manual focus only. Now, Rokinon has recently released a couple of lenses that do have autofocus, but most of them are indeed manual focus only. If you have a newer camera that has focus peaking or live view with the ability to zoom in or a very large viewfinder, then chances are you aren't gonna have much trouble focusing these lenses. If you have an entry level DSLR with a small penta mirror viewfinder, then you may have some trouble focusing these and these lenses may not be for you. Something else to know is that most of these lenses don't have any electronic chips, so lens data isn't transferred to the image, which could lead to a little bit of guesswork during post-processing. Now here it really comes down to what you shoot. If you shoot slower moving subjects or portraits or commercial work, then chances are you're gonna be fine with the autofocus. However, if you do shoot action or sports, then you'll probably have some trouble keeping up with the focus here and you may wanna invest in an autofocus lens. The second thing you should know about Rokinon lenses is that despite their low prices, the build quality is actually fantastic. Now I've been using these for a couple of years and I would put them on par with high-end lenses from Canon, Nikon, or Sony. They all have metal mounts, they use a little bit of plastic, but it's very high quality plastic and you would almost never know it. Another piece of good news is that since you're probably going to be manually focusing these lenses, the manual focus rings on these are excellent, especially in their newer models. The third thing you need to know about Rokinon lenses is that they are not only heavy duty, they're just plain old heavy. So if you're trying to keep a light kit, for example, if you're shooting Sony mirrorless, they do have that adapter built right into the lens, which adds to the length and the weight of the lens. Now, even though these don't have an autofocus motor built in, they're still heavier than most autofocus lenses. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're looking into these lenses. Do your research, compare them weight-wise to your existing lenses and see if it would work for you. But if you're trying to keep a light, small kit, then these may not be the right ones for you. The final thing you need to know about Rokinon lenses is that their newer designs are much better than their older designs. So for example, their earlier lenses are ones like the 14mm f2.8 and their 85mm f1.4. For most of these lenses, you can actually tell if they're older by their focus ring design. For example, on this particular lens, the 85 1.4, you can tell that the focus ring is split right here into two parts with this line down the middle. This is something shared by their 14 millimeter f2.8. Now this is something that their newer lenses like the 135 simply don't have. You can see that it's just one continuous line here on the focus ring. So that's a quick and easy way to identify which lenses are newer and which ones are older just from looking at the pictures. So to give you an example here, their 14 millimeter f2.8 ultra wide angle lens has this quirk where if you set it to infinity focus, it's actually focusing way past infinity and you end up with a blurry picture. So on my copy of the lens, what I have to do is set it to about a meter and a half focusing distance to get true infinity focus. Their 85 millimeter f1.4 lens is also an older design and it's a little bit soft wide open. This is something that is not shared by the newer Rokinon lenses. For example, the 135 f2, which is just perfectly sharp wide open. So if you're looking for a rule of thumb with Rokinon lenses and trying to determine if it's really good or not, I would say stick with the newer designs and you can be almost certain that they're optically excellent and that they don't have any hardware quirks like that 14 millimeter f2.8. So whether or not you should consider Rokinon lenses really comes down to one final question. 
can you deal with the lack of autofocus? And if you can, then absolutely consider these lenses. Their 135mm f2.0 is absolutely stellar optically. It's probably one of the best lenses I've ever shot with, and that's saying quite a bit. So really look into that. If you are shooting action or sports, then maybe these aren't gonna be for you. So that's it for my video today. If you guys have any questions about these Rokinon lenses, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below and I'll see you in the next video.